You know, when you were talking earlier, Bill, you talked about medicine, and you said they treat the symptom but not the cause. And whenever we have this this conversation about politics, it's always about treating the symptom and not the cause. No, the cause is, no. The, is Islam. That's the thing. The symptom is what's going on. Well, I don't the agree root- with... I, I, I respect that you believe that the cause is all Islam, but I think that there's a multi-cause here. And well, for instance, if we had never invaded Iraq, if we had never struck this hornet, If we had yes. never done that... 9-11 is- happened before all Islam... Islam there would moment. still be millions of people who believe you deserve to die if you elope with the wrong person, draw the wrong cartoon, leave the religion. But they believed that before there was ISIS. Right. They believed that before there yeah. was ISIS. You know, everybody's so horrified by these beheadings, which I am as well. We're horrified by what happened in, with the Jordanian pi- pilot, which I am as well. However, there are other things we should be horrified about. There was no connection between 9-11 and Iraq. But there is a big connection between our invasion of Iraq and what is happening, including with ISIS. We should can have some horror of national conscience. Can we, talk we should have about some horror of, of, of knowing our part that we played in allowing this thing to explode. Listen, the there's a, there's a big- that if I was living in the 16th century, it would be Christianity who I would be going after because they're the ones who are the most violent and the most intolerant. But we're not living in the 16th century. The problem with Obama making this statement is that he doesn't make the follow-up statement that I always do. We did it then, they're doing it now. His point was made at a prayer breakfast. He was speaking to people who theoretically understand the depth of nuance and theological discussion. Right. It is an important <laughs> yes. theological point right. that throughout history there have been people, including Christians, who were forces that used, that appropriated religion for evil purposes. That is what the Inquisition was, and that is what is going on now with Islam. And I'm proud on this one. I do not agree with the president on everything, but I say God bless him that he had that depth to talk about. It's not hard to... I think the the Brian Williams story is a huge red herring. Whether he should be fired or not, I don't know. But the entire American news establishment would be fired if telling the truth was the minimum standard. Well... I think... I mean... Most of our news organizations are owned by just a few corporations. They always support the sort of corporatist line because they are the corporatocracy. They just let George Bush walk into Iraq with hardly asking him any questions. They don't talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. They don't talk about Monsanto. They just Right, because who who does all the advertising in the nightly news? Thank you. Big Pharma. Uh, Marianne, you... (laughs) You ran as an independent last fall. What are the limits of our current two-party system? Well, I think that, you know, George Washington, first of all, in his farewell address, warned us against parties, period. And in the uh, history of social justice, particularly in real change in the United States, third-party voices have been extremely important. Abolition movement came out of the abolitionist party. Women's suffrage came out of the uh, women's suffrage party. They're always uh, absorbed by one of the two parties. Right, but it's important that you have that third. Yeah. And so there is really kind of conspiracy that's lasted for a few decades now to to marginalize and make very, very difficult to be heard third-party voices. And I think it's to the detriment of our political dialogue. Okay. Uh, Do the Republicans have any real plan to replace Obamacare, and what would that look like? The question becomes not just what are the Republicans going to do, but what are the Democrats going to do. They wouldn't allow public option. We need to have the conversation about single payer. We need to have spine around that conversation and to know that if we're a government of the people, by the people, for the people, primary there should be universal health care. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, panel. Thank you, audience.